Welcome back, Vulcan Deckmasters, week two, day one, with me, Wombat. We're just done casting a quick series between Kalento and Bunny Muffins, who finished 2-0 in favor of Kalento. And we're about to get into Thoida versus Nairia, so it's going to be pretty epic. Absolutely. Uh, both of these guys playing at the top of their game, so, I mean, really a clash of current titans in the Hearthstone scene. Uh, you know, they, they've, they've been playing well all over the place. Uh, it's it's going to be a good set, and we're going to see a little bit of variance here as... Uh, we got uh, some mages coming to the field for, well, not necessarily for sure. Well, actually, yeah, definitely. Somebody's going to have to play a mage at one point uh, right. as both sides playing mage. So what's really cool is that Thoida is one of the most creative deck builders out there. As I've said before, I've compared him as far as deck building creativity to Gara, uh, where he experiments a lot. Of course, sometimes it backfires and it doesn't go anywhere. But last time we saw him play, he played what looked like a mid-range hunter to us. But when I actually told him afterwards, hey, that was very standard for you, he said, no, there were actually two Azure Drakes in that you know hunter deck. And I'm like, okay, you know what? That does change uh, things a little bit. So he does take you know typical decks and spin them around like Gara does. Neri, on the other hand, just a very solid player who's come up with a few uh, a few twists to his own archetypes. Again, I want to reiterate, he's not going to be playing his OTK Warrior that we saw Kalento play, uh, probably because that deck has fallen out of favor. Very, very much so. But Neri is going to be playing a Mage uh, and a Rogue. And Neri is a very, very good Rogue player. So I'm pretty excited to see him uh, bring maybe a twist on typical you know Tinker Sharp Sword. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, Mage Druid for Thoida, uh, who's currently sitting at 1-1 overall. Uh, this will be Nyria's first um, first group round matchup, so he's at 0-0 right now. So, I mean, everything to gain here, and uh, Thoida could end up in a, in a really tough spot because obviously going 2-2 is not going to guarantee that you go marching through to the semifinals and the finals and a whole lot of money on the line here in the Vulcan yeah. Deckmasters Season 1 tournament. I am just curious to see if Naria is going to bring like a spin on Rogue because Rogue's been very like Tinker Sharp Sword Roll at the moment. I think is considered one of the better decks out there. It's definitely yeah. up there. Like maybe it's a tier one deck for sure. Like it's yeah, up there absolutely. with you know mid range hunter and patron warrior and handlock. Maybe less handlock nowadays, but Tinker Sharp Sword is definitely up there. It's got good matchups against the entire field, pretty much. Um, Mage could be an issue though. Mage could be a problem if uh, the rogue can't land everything. It's slightly favored for the rogue, but not by much. Yep, absolutely. Gonna see Deadly Poison Prep and SI7 Agent come out, and there's the Tinkers for Nyria. Uh, spec bug, because you gotta have at least one every time. Uh, uh -oh. be taken care of quick fast. Uh oh, Thoida with the Acidic Swamp Ooze and the Water Elemental against Nerea's Rogue. This Ooh. is either a complete insane read on the fact that Nerea would bring Rogue to the tournament, or just an anti-weapon deck that he happens to be playing up against Rogue. Yeah, I, I mean, mean this it, is just an insane combination for him. Yeah, I mean, I, I I see that come out, and the first thing that jumped in my mind was like, oh god, why didn't Nerea ban the Mage? Uh, you know, his other run was going to be b b b uh, Warrior. But do you expect mages to be playing this? I mean, I, I don't even yeah, expect no. this anymore. All I see are Freeze mages, Echo mage sometimes, but typically rogues win. Now, Thoida's going to play the Ooze on an unbuffed weapon. Can't really fault him for that, but it feels like a pretty weak play. There's better times probably to use that. Um, I think there, there might have been a better time. The only drawback is obviously that... When you do go for a kill on a, uh, on a weapon, very often rogues will pop it as soon as it's buffed. Two counter spells for Thoida. Wow, one is already down, one in hand. What on earth, Thoida? What are you playing? Yeah. <laughs> this rogue deck is going to have a, like, a really hard time catching up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much got Nyria pinned here. I mean, obviously you got that Swamp Ooze out fairly early, but the Water Elemental is going to be super scary. Counter spell just... Deadly poison ruining this deadly poison. Oh man. Oh, there it goes. Countered and uh, just off into the toilet with it. Back over to Thoida. Who gets a water elemental and this is going to start, you know, uh, biting a little bit. Because he, unless he picks up a prep, he can't play the Drake on the back of the sap and he has to sap. He's going to have to find some answers. So he's going to. Oh my god. Naria. Going to pull a fan of knives. I mean, and boom for Thoida. So he's just, I mean, curved right the way up into a comfortable position. So my Nyria, question yeah. to you, how do you do this? Do you counter spell ping and kill the Drake? Or do you develop the second water elemental and leave yourself open to possible blade flurries? Uh, 
I mean, like, with the Gareth position Bell, he's yeah. in, I think I want I want the Drake off the field, just to get rid of the extra damage. What if he just goes for like just a fireball? Yep. Yeah, okay, He's never mind. just gonna fireball. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he took the like... simple. We were like, you build a bridge <laughs> over, and then uh, and then everybody else was like, why don't you just walk around? And yeah. we're like, yeah, you could just walk around. They'll do that. Or just walking around. Yeah. Well, he's gonna get south, but I mean, after that, um, he's just gonna get to replay his stuff. There we go, okay. anti kill bot, and the backstab. So oh, got it down to four. Harrison oh, Jones. Boy, with the crazy <laughs> anti weapon tech here. I yeah, I mean, it's again, it's just every what? time another card comes out, it's worse and worse for Nyria. If there's a way through this, he definitely isn't holding it in hand at the moment because he's just going to be frozen up all game if he manages to get around that. There's plenty of other stuff sitting in Doida's hand that's uh, going to get him basically. <laughs> so Nyria right just looking spot. at the camera like, well, I guess yeah. I should try to play a card, but I mean, how do I play a card? Oh, what he has to do here thing. is find a Blade Flurry straight up because he can't use the first, you know, the dagger hit in order to get it done, right? Yeah. He could I, play Blood Mage Talnos, prep Phantom Knives if he wanted, but I don't think that's going to be very impactful. Yeah, I mean, it's you're not in the worst position so far. Yeah, he's got you locked down so far, but you've got to be thinking, okay, he's going to run out of this eventually, so so maybe I hold off. I don't go, you know, super crazy trying to get stuff out of the way, but he is going to sap that water elemental back into the hand just in time for, you know, Dr. Boom to uh, hang out if he wants. Do you, Dr. Boom? Do you, Harrison Jones, Ping? I think Dr. I, Boom is the better one. As you said, you know, it's obviously yeah. an obvious turn seven play. Um, it's just that... Rogues have no way to handle Dr. Boom at all. Like, it's like a Ragnaros. What does a rogue do? Sap it? Okay. Like, they really need to have Drake sap. plus backstab at this rate. So, I, I think there's like two plays for him. Well, he picked up the Harrison Jones play. Denying the Dinker's Sharp Sword. Now, Rio must be wondering, <laughs> what, what is that? Did he just target me personally or what? Yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's and there's the second Tinkers. So, I mean, maybe, yeah, he ends up next turn in a spot where he can put some work down, but he can get the water elemental back out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's rough for Nyria here because he's just got really nothing. The, the weapons have been dealt with every single step of the way. He puts a single damage down there on Harrison and is going to throw the dagger on and SI-70. No, I'm just going to go to face on it. This guy's uh, so Thorda now knows that he's at least stalled the inevitable blade flurries, right? He's at least stalled them. Now he's going to have to go for the follow-up plays, which are going to have to seal the game eventually. Um, because he has, he's going to regain the board fairly easily no matter what he does. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, he's got a frost bolt for either the minion or the face. What elemental mad scientists together can also, you know, m muster up some aggression. Naria is going to have to find a flurry and... Something to answer boom that comes after that. Yeah, and he's got he's got a prep in hand. So I mean like you are really getting to that point where you're gonna wanna make sure that he can't really do too much to you in one turn and uh, you know might be able to get a little bit of work done this turn, but uh needs to find a only sprint and eviscerate. Oh he picks up the flurry. Does he have to prep flurry? Oh man, if he does that, it's gonna be so bad for him. Oh. And that's he, he knows he's got to. He knows he's got to. He's not insane. He's going to have to deadly poison flurry on the back of this. Make sure the water elemental is out of the way. Thorida is going to have to answer that one Drake on its own. But he's got just what he needs, actually, at this point. You know, Jure Drake, Fireball, and move on. Yep. And Nyria will be stuck with a Tinker Sharp Sword and nothing to do with it. Yep. All dressed up. Well, not even really particularly well dressed up. You're wearing a sock and you're naked in the cold in uh, New York City in the winter. And that's... Basically, where he's sitting, Drake gonna come down here for Thoida, it looks like. What is this secret that Thoida has? Is he playing Ice Block or Mirror Entity? It looks like Tempo Mage, so I'd be willing to say Mirror Entity, but it looks like it's targeting an area, so I'm almost. <laughs> I figured <laughs> maybe it's Ice Block at yeah. this point, or Ice Barrier. I mean, I wouldn't even know. And Ragnaros, again, as I mentioned, really, really unmanageable minion for rogues. Now he's just yeah, going I mean, through emotions. It really is just an anti-rogue deck here. He's, he's, every single move is uh, done there. It was Mirror Entity. So he's going to get a Violet Teacher. So I gets, uh, you know, something out on the field, which is nice. And he's going to be able to tinker us up and uh, get a little bit of action cleared away. Mana Worm now for Thoida. 
And this flame strike with Mana Worm and a ping is going to wipe the board clean. An area with no option but to top deck another flurry that's not even going to kill the Violet Teacher at that point. Yeah, I mean, I just, how long do you sit in on this one? I mean, obviously, Thoida hasn't had an opportunity to, to go to face with a ton of damage. So you want to wait and see if there's some magic in your deck that's going to solve this problem for you. But, I mean, the Dr. Boom's been sitting there for forever. I don't think Thoida so. really needs yeah. it. This is the fun thing. It's like Flame Strike, yeah. with the, like, Metal Worm here comes in as a nice cure filler because it allows you to not only weave it in, but buff its attack with a Flame Strike while you were doing something you were already going to do, which is kill the Vile Teacher with the ping. And the flame strike. So Nyria here, one out, blade flurry number two to even just clear up the board. Um, this is just, you know, he's going through the motions after the ooze and the Harrison Jones and the double water elemental and the counter spell, mind you. There's only so much you can do with Nyria. Yeah, I mean, Thoida basically just can autopilot through the rest of this one as the decisions basically. I mean, I wouldn't even say make themselves. It's pretty much, you know, dealer's choice on it. So he's going to unstable portal and see if he pulls anything fun out of there. Do you think Neria, like a rogue, is getting targeted by Thoida so much so that the druid from Thoida also runs all that anti-weapon stuff? I wonder. Yeah, I mean, it's you got to think that you got to go. You got two games to win, right? So I mean, you can't. My brain says you can't afford to do that, but maybe Thoida thinks, okay, well, I can, I can just dumpster the rogue, and then I've got enough range. To get the rest of the to get the rest of the job done, I mean, because certainly nothing in Thoida's hands bad cards. Just gonna concede on that one, as you know, he he's been basically drawing into nothing for a while now. Yeah, Game every, every move he's taken was exact like was exactly countered by something Thoida had. So Thoida's gonna have to move on to his Druid deck now. I really, really want to see whether or not it's gonna be able to take out that Rogue because it does have to. If he targeted it, it's possible it wins because typically Druid mid range, if it is a mid range list, has a rougher matchup against all Rogue than it would like to have. But against Ramp Druid, um, Tinker Sharp Sword again, you know, unless they've got they get a massive AOE like they do against Handlock, they can sometimes lock out the board. The amount of taunts there can really play against the rogue's ability to just you know get a sick blade flurry and win over the game by that point yeah and obviously we'll see if nyria decides to switch it up and roll to his mage deck as well because i mean it's it's got to be a concern at this point that you know you might just be locked out because uh, again like you said i mean there's not a lot of variance in rogue at the moment i mean it just it, I, in the competitive play anyway it's a lot of oil rogue um and obviously <laughs> Obviously, somebody was privy to that information and took a game very, very handily off of Nyria. Yeah, I'm just curious to know if uh, maybe Thoida would, uh, not Thoida, but Nyria would ever bring, say, an Echo Mage to the lineup. Because Echo Mage has been seeing, making a big splash on the ladder recently. Um, for some reason, it came back as a very popular deck. Unfortunately, neither Mage deck, that are, none of the Mage decks that are really popular now do so well against Midrange Druid. So Naria's lineup might have just been hard targeted by uh, Thoida. Freeze Mage. All right, now we're talking. This is probably uh, yeah. I mean, a little more manageable for Naria. It's a, it's still really tough, mind you, especially with the wild growth. But it's a matchup that can be won. So Thoida may be sitting in a good spot. Naria is gonna switch it up. I I don't blame him after that. I wouldn't want to look at uh, Valira's face for a couple minutes after that last one, but. Uh, here we go. As we roll into it, Swipe going to be the first pull for Thoida. And Thalnos on the other side, then Ancient of Lore, and he's going to Wild Growth. Oh man, picks up Pilot of Shredder, Shade of Nax, Ancient of Lore. Those are the most important cards because you can put them early. And there he is just rolling his eyes, realizing, well, that game's over. GG. This is uh, Wild Growth. I mean, I, you know, let's not be Debbie Downers, but... Oh, yep. wow. Peace up Lothab as well for later. But basically, a druid's win rate against the deck that aims to control hinges on its ability to wild growth and innervate really good cards on at good times. Um, there isn't a bit of a pain for that. Yep. Going to uh, pull himself a frost bolt and go ahead and clear away the shredder. And that's a really nice outcome for Naria here. Not having to handle a 3-2, for instance, which he would have had to coin a ping for. And the weapon yeah, in Druid targeting that rogue. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> man. Naria's going to... Even if he wins with this, he's going to have to go up another ooze deck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ooze oh, every day. 
Again, Nyria probably a little sad to see the ooze. He's just like, good. Well, he more, or rather, he's probably happy he switched it up. He's probably just like, okay, good. Well, good. The thing is, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? In a conquest yeah. format, you're like, well, I guess GG, Thoi did. Ni nicely done there, teching against me perfectly in this match. And Spectral Knight, oh man, Thoida is targeting Nerea so hard, I'm truly dying. This is not oh. possible. Lotheb, Spectral Knight, Ooze, that rogue is not taking a single game off of Thoida. If no. Nerea pulls it off, <laughs> I will be amazed. Oh, I love Thoida. I mean, a collected customer, you gotta be confident, you gotta be sitting in a good spot after the first game. I mean... That just, that almost, it felt mean, <laughs> you know, that Yeah, yeah, game. every, it's like bullying. He just bullied yeah. Nerea. Yeah. He's just like, I know what you're going to do, and no, you're not. You're not going to do it. Let them now, come out. Now, knowing that Nerea probably wants to go for a Nova Doomsayer, doesn't have the Keeper of the Grove, so he's not going to play into it. Instead, Lothab to lock down the board. Is double Doomsayer a play here? Might or do be. you just play one to... St basically, you can use one of them as a ice barrier because it's going to soak up eight damage. Uh, seven damage, that is. Well, in this case, it's going to be eight. So it's like a two-mana yeah. healing touch, which is pretty solid. So you could do yeah. that and go for the Nova next turn. Or you could wait one turn to go double Doomsayer Frost Nova, which is going to guarantee that even with one Keeper, one of them should stay up. Just going to ping on to loathe them. He's definitely setting up a double Doomsayer. Yeah. Force of Nature out now for Thoida. He's going to drop the Ancient Allure. Wants to fetch the combo pieces. He's expecting a Flame Strike next turn, but Naria not quite with the uh, Flame Strike yet. He's going to be able to. No, Thoida's going to be able to punch Naria in the face quite hard. Going to get a Druid of the Claw and Dr. Boom. So, I mean, again, Thoida's sitting in a, a solid spot. Spec Bug back again. It's everybody's favorite friend. All right, there comes the Nova Doomster. My question is, do you coin out the second one because you're afraid of Keeper of the Grove? My guess is yes, and he does. All right, yes. so Naria definitely afraid of the you know Keeper of the Grove. At this point, Thorida needs some very specific combination of cards to get rid of these two. It's unlikely he's got them at all. Yep, that's it. The question is, do you yep. just punch face with one of your forces of nature for six because you can? I mean, right, like, you got to feel like you've got him. I mean, if he's running double dooms here, you got to feel like you've kind of got him. Uh, On the ropes, right. Necessarily, yeah. I mean, you've got him in a good position where you're definitely going to want to take advantage and get a little bit of something done, especially since you've got both of them hanging out in your hand. You might as well just, yeah, go for it. Yeah, throw one out. Bring him down to 13 health with your hero power. Then between the Druid of the Claw, the Chargers, the Swipe, and the Second Force of Nature, you've got him dead even without Savage Roar. So yeah. it's just a matter of an area. Finding. Oh, is he gonna? Yeah, I'm just gonna clear it. No, oh, yeah, he's going to face. I thought for a second he was about to pop a doom. I was like, what? Yeah, no way. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it causes <laughs> a chain reaction where the first one dies. The second's like, man, I have no chance. I'm out of here. All right, so Naria finally with a clean board. He's gonna be able to get a nice block, and he can set up a second ice barrier from the mad scientist being up. He can almost Alexstrasza himself, but there's a huge stretch between living. And winning, there's yeah. like he can survive a few more turns, but killing his opponent is going to be a feat of strength, if anything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's win conditions are dwindling. I, you know, the flame strike is is going to possibly buy him a little bit more time, depending on what kind of board uh, Thoida puts up in front of him. But it's uh, it's yeah, it's a rough spot. Uh, he is going to make it to Alex Straza, but uh, that's going to be just about all he does is make it there. So Thoida is thinking to himself. Do I really want to let him, you know, kill his own mad scientist? Because if he forces the nature to face here for six, there's a chance like mad scientist never gets popped. And as a result, mm. what this means is that you don't have to deal with the other ice barrier. Yeah, I think I think that's that's got to be what you what you got to be thinking. You think, okay, well let's let's just throw that down. Instead, he's gonna go Doctor Boom. Yeah, he's gonna go Doctor Boom. It's the more sensible play. Like, there's a few things going through his mind, including, do I really want to deal with that secret? But with the amount of phase damage you've got in your hand, two Jewels of the Claw for eight to face with charge, force of nature, and the swipe, you're looking very strong no matter what happens here very often. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, just play it back, play it safe. You know, maybe you get some nice, uh, some nice tosses on the bomb, and you end up in a, an even better position going forward anyway. So, yeah, I mean, conservative play and a uh, good one there from Thoida. Nyria. Gonna get Blizzard again. I mean, he's got Flame Strike and Blizzard, so he can clear the board again. Like you said, staying alive though. Yeah, I think he's gonna fireball Dr. Bingo most <laughs> of the time. Gonna get his other secret. 
Now, if Fire Blowing Dr. Boom means he's going to fully rely on his Archmage Antonidas to cycle. Now, doing this basically guaranteed that the Mad Scientist was going to be able to get the Ice Barrier. Which is pretty nice, because that way he's got 20 effective health plus the Ice Block, so that Thoida has to go through a bit more than he expected initially. Yeah. So a slow roll here from Thoida, not uh, going to be the worst idea. He's got to obviously start chipping away at it, but uh, he knows he's got a lot of work to do, so you don't want to rush into it. And he's just going to go to face with the bomb. You know, more, the more I think about this, the more I keep wondering if Thoida, like, targeted in areas... No. I was going to say, Control Warrior could have been a decent tech, because playing all these weapons, you're targeting Rogue or you're targeting a Warrior. But those Spectral Knights lead me to believe he must have been targeting... Something very specific from the area. Where shall I strike? Mm. Man, this double charge, force and nature yeah. swipe. This is just so hard for uh, an area. There's like nothing he can do here. He's got to be taking the lethal next turn no matter what. Yep, down to 11. Flame strike, gonna get the board cleared up and takes two to the face. Nowhere Thoida else for it to go. So it will be able to pop the block here with force and nature swipe. But if an area picks up. The ice block followed by Alex Straza. Could that be enough? Thoida grabs a keeper. Not a bad I card. Mean, do you pop yeah. the do you pop it now or are you afraid of Alex? Because Alex Straza is really scary here if you're Thoida. If you go for some nature swipe and there's an Alex Straza from Naria onto himself, Thoida is gonna be in a world of hurt. Because suddenly Naria has the initiative, he's got the 8-8, and he can then start retaliating. And Thoida's yeah. gonna go all in. There it is. He's gonna go for it. The all-in play here. It's going to leave his opponent on one health, but that makes Alex Straza all the scarier. Yeah, full value. And Thoida's going to hope. Thoida is praying to either find BGH or that Naria doesn't have the Alex Straza, but unfortunately for him, Naria has the Alex, which is going to mean that Thoida is out of forces of nature. And how do you deal 15 to a Naria at this point? Not how from Thoida. It's within parameters. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to start getting really hefty really quick. So, I mean, Thoida's going to have to move. And right now, his cards, he, you know, he didn't slow play it. He ended up uh, just going, going full ham there. And now he's sitting in a spot where, you know, he's got to get some work done quick, fast. See what he does. Going to grab he's Shade. A big game hunter. Growth. That is not it. Blizzard from Naria going to lock down the board turn after turn. Naria has got to feel okay with this. This is probably the moment of whiplash for Naria where you can actually swing back in the game. Yeah. He's going to have uh, 18 on board over the next two, regardless of anything else that gets dropped, and he's going to get the loot hoarder on, so that's going to add two in for each turn. I mean, it's a rough spot for Thoida. Oh, man, never mind. He's fine. Double Wrath Keeper oh, yeah, Wrath. on the loot hoarder, and that's going to yeah. seal the board out. Naria's going to have to Blizzard again. No more damage output for him. So... The way to comfy, I mean, he's he's ended up in a good spot pretty much every single time. That first game, just straight up bullying. So, I mean, Nyria got to feel like he's been playing from behind pretty much the entire time. Gets a great Alex Straza there. Here comes the Wrath. There is something here to be said about... Whoa, what? Hmm? So he's going to silence his own 5-2 to kill into the 8-8 uh, the eight eight with the Wrath and sacrifice it. I'm a little surprised if he does that because I thought just going for double Wrath here was the uh, Time waits for no one. play, but it didn't cycle, I guess. Because he could have kept the 5-2 alive. Maybe he assumes that it's going to die to some AoE or another. So he's willing to trade it away in, in order to cycle a card. You know what, that's not even a bad up. idea. Yeah. Not even a bad idea. An area, again, having to defend. Not really worried about Force of Nature Savage Roar, so he doesn't feel the pressure to heal up just yet, for sure. Yeah, mitigates all that uh, potential damage there from Nyria. Loot Hoarder going to be the next grab, and out comes Antonidas. And there is no silence from Thoria's side, who's going to have to find... He's got two draws to find the answer. Wild Growth could cycle into another card. Innervate. That is not what he's looking for, again. Don't need that so much right now. If Nyria locks up this board just once, that's going to be it. Like, if he freezes once, that's it. Thoria is going to be uh, taking a lot of damage from those fireballs. Yeah, by Pyroblast in hand now. Uh, so Nyria, I mean, he's he's kind of played himself into a nice little position here just by kind of holding on, <laughs> waiting until weathering the Druid Storm, coming out the other side of it. But he's not out of the woods just yet. While Growth, going to pull, what are we going to get? 
Oh, I... that's exactly what he needed to kill that Archimage Antonitis. Would, uh, almost has a human style reaction to that one. I mean, I, I would smash that so hard. <laughs> see what the way it does with it, though. These Slap pros it on the are go, go, go. unpredictable guys. And there he uh, will see the swipe. Yeah. Oh man, he's all tapping. The lighting on his face indicates that he is. Not wild growth top deck. He'll come back later. You'll see how it goes in. Bonk. And there you but go. But you know what? Neri is not even in a bad spot. Because the Druid of the Claw are out. What charge minions are left in Thoida's deck? None. So you can basically just go Arcane Elect. You know, punch face with Fireball. Take your sweet time. Maybe find a Frost Bolt or two. Like, you, there's a good chance Neri just pulls the win from drawing all his win conditions at this point. Yep. There's a very good chance of that. they're waiting. Mm -hmm. Just gonna mad. Nope, Acolyte. Ping Mad Scientist for Fireball Face for the Pyroblast Kill. Yeah. Alright, turns out it's gonna be the Pyroblast Kill as soon as possible. Marius oh, yeah. smells doing, blood and he's going for it. Doing math as quickly as he can there. He's trying to find a way out of this. He knows he's getting a little bit behind the eight ball here. This game has probably gone on about four turns longer than he would have liked. Yeah, I think that Alex Straza was the pivotal point. I mean, Thoida had a really, really good start, but Naria with that clutch Alex exactly on 9 mana, right? That was the most important card. Getting that Ice Barrier, the second one, giving him just an extra bit of health to survive until the late game, and that's going to allow him possibly to take the win here. He still hasn't seen a single Savage Roar, though, so he's got to be slightly worried. If anything lives, then he takes the Savage Roar damage. So he's going to have to freeze the board. Silence onto the Acolyte, and he's going to go to face with the hero power. Going to get a slightly cheaper knight there, and Thor Sand now for Nyria. See where he goes with it. I got to say, it's, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's still not completely done for Nyria here. He can certainly step the wrong direction. End up in a bad way. The Blizzard... Yes, he's gonna come out. Nyria's got this game next turn unless Thoida finds a taunt. Like, he needs to play a Belcher or some such thing. Which, again, not very That's common right. in non-ramped list. Yeah. Innervate. Yeah, he knows uh, this is the end. Thoida yeah, knows. Blast. No way to get that board cleared away. So, Thoida ends up a little too long, overstays his welcome against Nyria and just... Uh, you know, I don't like this placement of the uh, Keeper of the Grove because if you put it in the middle and it gets recombobulated and can turn into a Shredder who then drops a Direwolf Alpha. So it should be in the center. Well that game. Yeah, Alright, we'll, so Thoida we'll send that over to Thoida. <laughs> yep. 1-1 one, one now as uh, Thoida, I mean, again, Nyria is going to have to go back to his rogue deck here for game three. And, and that Druid deck, it's got, it's definitely got some, uh, some rogue hugs uh, in there that Nyria is going to have to be very, very wary of. But yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, maybe he uh, finds his way around it. Or rogue is typically slightly favored against mid-range Druid. However, when the Druid is running two Spectral Knights, we have to assume at the very least, and an ooze that does give the mid-range druid a bit of an edge over you. Where the matchup would be slightly in Oil Rogue's favor, it might even be slightly in the druid's favor at that point. And they dive straight into this one. Got prep he's going to hold on to. End up with sap and some other stuff, we'll find out. Sprint. Yeah. Very important cards here for both players. Naria picking up the prep sprint very early, and Thoida with the wild growth. Again, one of the most important, well, the most important cards in your starting hand. Wave Fury for Nyria, and then uh, just a lot of back and forth. There's Thorsan going to come out for Thoida. He plays wild growth. And, well uh, Naria says, well played, and Thoida answers nothing, actually. Not that <laughs> where's, where's the love? You know, oh, there it is. Well, there we go. It's just a little late. <laughs> just a little late. That's okay. It's manner is what Hearthstone's all about. So Nyria getting to the point where he wants to think just a little bit. I wonder. All right. He's got his coin. Do I want to coin SI for the body? Do I want to coin SI for the the other ring that is, as well? Like he's got two choices, but I think ultimately passing is the more long term plan. And honestly, Thoida missing his four drop, no shade of Nax, no powder shredder is good for Nyria. He's got to be pretty happy about that. But he's gonna be scared of an eventual spectral knight. 
So he's going to have to populate this board. Lucky for him, though, if you think about it, the combination of the SI coin plus the 3-3 that's going to fall down uh, with the weapon, that can kill a special knight. So it's very good yeah. for Naria here. Yeah, he's definitely getting the, uh, the, the early game that he wants. Uh, it's setting him up for success, and he's just going to, yeah, there you go. Swing if across. he expects Spectral Knight, you can use the first switch there, the first, no, switch, first charge. But Wild Growth out for Thoida. Does he go for Wild Growth Wrath or the Spectral Knight? Because Spectral Knight, you know, is super weak here. Like, you know it's likely the yeah. opponent's going to be able to prep out Tinkers or, you know, use a combination of uh, Deadly Poison with a 3-3 to kill your Spectral Knight. There's no Deadly Poison, but you've got to be afraid of that. So and he's going to go for it. I mean, with the 3-3 three, three on the board, it'd be worth giving a second thought, but uh, Thoida doesn't do it. Gets a second prep. Here comes the prep. Prep sprint. Just Prince. He's going to fetch those uh, massive weapon buffs for the Blade Flurry plays just to get rid of that Spectral Knight while being card efficient. He better find... Uh-oh, he didn't he find... He does not. Oh, man. Having to use that coin for nothing. Yeah. Ends up with Violent Teacher and SI7 and a couple of spells. So now he has to trade the three spins of four six, uh, if he doesn't want to lose it to Wrath. But if he doesn't care because he just expects to get a blade flurry, he doesn't really have to. So it's one or the other. He decided blade flurry is going to carry me here. I'm not. I don't have to worry about the spectral light at all. Just go to face. Make sure that he doesn't end up uh, ever so slowly building that armor up. Thor saying here on six for Thoid. It looks like. Not too much to worry about is that 3-3. Not terribly scary at the moment, but that sprint last round has to get Thoida thinking, so he's going to make things cheaper. Trade into the 3-3 and just send it back. All right, so he picks out the Tinker's Sharp Sword. What the, what, that's exactly what he's been waiting for, to get a Blade Flurry off. Um, so he's going to have to decide whether he wants to do it now or wait one turn, because if he goes to... If he d decides to play minions, right, and prep the Tinkers now, he can't Blade 3 just yet. Um, and leaving that Emperor up for too long against a Druid means you're very, very likely to get double comboed later for 22 damage, which, again, not an option very frequently. Um, so, I mean, I guess, I guess it'll come down to whether or not he's willing to risk that. I don't think so. Yep, I think it's too big a risk. Drop the prep. This rate with the SI... Gonna get some hefty damage sent out, and is I it really, be good this is a really good play by Nary. I really like that play. Super solid. I didn't even spot it right away. Um, you know, no yes. surprise. But that's a perfect blade for you. Not even having to use Tinkers to wipe the board. Using the SI just as a little bit of a a buffer for damage. Pseudo spell power here. Gonna be able to hold on to that Tinkers for a little bit later. Drew to the claw now for Thoida. And he's just going to throw that on the board. He's got, uh, you know, he's got some moves for a little later, but right now it looks like just going to be a druid. And he's going to send the wrath over, take care of the SI7 agent. Ooh, the Nary, card's uh, actually cleared. That's always scary. Nary getting the sap here with the the violet teacher. I mean, it's vulnerable to swipe, but again, very strong play here. You have to do it. Force the Druid to swipe, then hero power to get rid of the Vile Teacher, which means you're locking up potentially, in this case, five of his mana since he's played Emperor. Sometimes six. Pilot and Shredder are going to come out. This really yeah. puts Thoid in a weird position. Yeah. Because uh, he can only yeah. swipe in hero power and not Druid of the Claw or Shredder on the back of it. Yeah, it's. I mean, and it's it's a tough call. I mean, it it's not exactly. It's letting Nyria basically hold on to uh, control over his turn there for one. That's. Uh, I mean, one that he definitely wants to get a little bit of work on, as he hasn't been really hitting uh, the best draws. He's kind of yeah. sitting in a I little think, bit of uh, weird hand right now. In Thoida's position, you want to just play minions here. Let the Vile Teacher spawn as many one ones as it wants, and then you wipe them all out at once. And swipe it, yep. With a, with a single swipe, because otherwise you're very often just going to waste your entire tempo here. No and I don't think that's worth it. Like if the if Naria ends up attacking to the Druid of the Claw with the Vile Teacher, that puts the Vile Teacher in swipe range, and you don't really have to do much of an effort for that. So we will just Druid of the Claw back out and get rid of the little friend that the teacher brought to the party and send it back over and let Nyria make the hard decisions. The hard decision is to sap immediately. Uh, the sap dance. An SI7 engine. Good old sap dance. Ah, this guy's a toast. It's fun. It's a great way to spend your mana, kids. 
If you got a weekend and you're overburdened for mana, so find a friend. Last turn, last turn, I think I would have liked Toyda to play Wild Growth just so he could double swipe Shredder on the following turn. Because now, even though he might want to double swipe, um, if he does at all, if he wants to double swipe, he can't play the Shredder on the back of it. I mean, luckily he picked up a shade, but that wasn't exactly the most likely outcome. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not. You don't necessarily plan for that. He's gonna end up there, and there we go. Double swipe and shade. Yep. Yeah, very double good outcome shade. here for Toyota. That shade of Max really coming in to help the curve. Otherwise, Wild Growth last turn would have had to be the play, uh, which he didn't do. Oh, Neria with the Azure Tray, killing that shade right off the board. Whew. Fan of knives. He says sorry about that. Oh man, no hard, no hard feelings, but I'm gonna kill that shade. <laughs> it's a deadly poison as well. Some nice draws for Nyria. Doctor Boom here for Thoida. And is he gonna send him out? He's got Druid of the Claw and uh, Shredder as well. But again, uh, plenty of draws for Nyria. You gotta be thinking about what he's hanging on to over there. All right, so here's the scary thing about facing off. If there's a Dr. Boom, of course, it falls down. Is that as an area, you've already used your two saps, so you have to Blade Fury this turn to get rid of it. And at this point, you've got to be worried about the combo. You, like, you start being worried about it. Um, I don't know if an area tracked all the cards that were reduced in mana cost by Emperor Thorson and the number of them, but this could be a consideration for him. So Dr. Boom doesn't fall out. So it is going to be... Playing a little cautiously here. Yeah, Joy to the Claw Shredder. There's a sprint for Nyria, who probably would not begrudge the uh, extra opportunities in the hand. And uh, we'll see where he ends up with it. Yeah, Thoida's going to be like, this is a game where if the Rogue stabilizes as early as it did in this match, it's really tough at any point for the Druid to really climb back in. Like, Nyria here getting a really clean board wipe. Like, this is just perfect for him. Yeah, it's just flawless. Oh, yeah. Thoida is going to have to play from behind at this point. How about the a quarter Uzi's of a second? The is useless. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Little turn 10 ooze coming to the party. Late, drunk, and sloppy, and just annoying everybody that's already there. Typical ooze. Hmm. So Drake out. It's going to have to be boom. And some, still some nice stuff over on Nyria's side. Some, uh, he's got Tinkers, got his backstab as well. And obviously the 4-4 uh, four, four is going to be hanging out for a bit. So, I mean, it's a rough boom to drop if you're Thoida. It's not like you have a choice, really. Like, you have yeah. seen two Blade Flurries, right? The early Blade Flurry that we saw against the Emperor and the uh, Spectral Knight. And now the second one just came out. So if you play Doctor Boom, the odds of Nyria killing it will involve backstabs, eviscerates. Um, quite a few... I mean, complicated turns, basically, uh, by an area. So Thoida is going to probably be able to keep the Doctor Boom unless an area backstabs it and trades the Drake. It all depends on whether an area wants to push for aggression or not. Very often, you don't have to. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the hand for Thoida. Yeah, that's is, a crazy yeah. outcome. This Lothab here is a really it's a game changer for an area. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're just not going to have to worry too much about Thoida if you're worried about the combos coming. Or combo with three cards in hand. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Nyria got some thinking to do. He's got plenty of options and plenty to do. And do you backstab trade Lothab after attacking, or do you not want a Lothab because it's too weak of a follow up? Like Sprint might be, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's gonna go Tinker's Farseer, Eviscerate, and Oof, backstab Eviscerate. Goodbye, Doctor Boom. Whew. Rest in peace. For the combo. And nice draws there for Nyria. <laughs> just Again, playing his outs here, really can't fault him yeah. for that. And now he's going to be able to buffer up his dagger to 7 attack with the double tinkers if he wants to over the next few turns. But that's not going to stay up for very long. Double yeah, keeper for it. Thoida. Double keeper for Thoida. And he needs it. He's down to 10 health and Nyria is getting a pretty scary hand put together over there. This is actually what, this is Thoida's moment. This is what, exactly what he needs to do. Like, this is exactly the moment I Thoida probably needed to, to have in order to win the game. There's no more AoE. We've seen two Fan of Knives, right? We've seen two Blade Flurries. Playing the Ooze here allows you to get a bigger Savage Roar. He doesn't go for that. I thought he was going to go for it and try to set up the biggest Savage Roar he could for the following <laughs> turn, but he's still going for the long game. 
All right. Well, let's see how Nary handles this board because this could be That's tricky. Clear. Backstab. So just, yeah. I mean, it was a scary hand and then uh, double keeper. He's got the Tinkers. Backs. He's going to backstab. Boop, boop, boop. It's easy to play Lothab and Drake here. I think Nary is going to probably end up doing that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you've got to be worried about the, the combo. So Lothab is likely to come out. Yeah, it's, I mean, Thoida, especially as, as thin as Thoida's drawn into the deck now, he's, he's got to be getting close to it, you got to imagine. Three to face, and going to hero power, hit the other one, take that. Reduce the amount up. of minions on the board, and Earthling Farcer comes out with Lothab. So you know what, this is the best play area could have mustered. And now, I think Thoida is... On the ropes. I mean, how does he even deal with this board? Yeah, he's it's got Savage Roar wrath. wrath left. And, I mean, double Tinkers hanging around for Nyria. That's a whole lot. And he's got the heal bot as well. So, yeah, I mean, Nyria is just in a comfy spot here in Thoida, not with uh, a whole lot of beef to put over, especially with the Lotheb. Just yeah, there's one play here for Thoida. Down. There's like one play for him to make very often. Um, it's just that. Even if he makes it, like Neria can very easily re dagger and double tinkers right out of the blue and go face with both. Yes, sir. And he's going to yeah. spin seven on wrath. I mean, Savage Roar Hero Power would have wiped the board, but you're left with such a weak board. Yeah. It's like he can wipe the board here with like 3 3 and the. Because he has to play around Tinker Sharp Sword at this point. He's got to. He hasn't seen a single one yet. So that's the only thing he's worried about. And Naria yeah. knows it, so he's got to play around that. And uh, deadly well, poison. that's going to be game <laughs> right there. <laughs> Naria going to draw into an extra couple of damage there. And here we exact go. Tinkers, lethal. Tinkers, Deadly Poison. Exact lethal for Naria with that last Deadly Poison. Probably the court he was waiting for all along. Toyota played it very well here. So Naria is going to take the win against the mid-range Druid, which seemed to be teched against Naria's lineup. But Naria is going to prevail. That's actually a pretty sick series of games, honestly. I really enjoyed those. Yeah, yeah I mean, very, very technical play there. Uh, I mean, you got Thoida comes loaded for Bear to just shut Rogue down. Uh, I mean, even with the Druid deck getting a little bit, didn't get lucky with the Ooze, though. Um, and it ended up, you know, <laughs> that last turn would have been a I great like, place uh, to have a little extra time to get the ooze out. But what are you going to do? I thought, the, I thought the lineup was really interesting. I'm just surprised that Thoida banned um, from Naria, the hunter. I guess his lineup might have been a bit too slow to handle it. Ultimately, he was prepared against Warrior and Rogue, you know, with all the, the weapon hay that he had in both decks and the way that the decks were made, really. Uh, he was well equipped to handle those. So I was really happy with the deck choices that Thoida made. But... Ultimately, sometimes things don't line up and you end up losing games that you think you otherwise yeah. would have won. I mean, Nyria with just some great tenacious play there. He knew what he was he was going to be capable of and he held on. He played patient and he played smart in a couple of spots. Thoida, you know, played a little bit aggressive that may have been the turnaround on him uh, in that second game. But uh, ended up, Nyria held on, got the just beautiful Alex Draza, perfect. Right. And, uh, he's going to go up 0-1 or 1-0. Uh, in the group play, and that's going to send Thoida to one and two. So at best, I think he's going to be able to end up two two in his in the tiebreaker uh, score at that point. Yeah. So for the next match, guys, we'll be taking a short break. It's going to be show versus cipher. Before we go, a quick shout out to Vulcan for organizing this whole thing, and to Squarespace for sponsoring the event. If you want to check them out, they're a you know website building website. Go there; it's very cheap. They've got a ton of really easy layouts. If you know nothing of coding, it's very simple. Squarespace.com/deckmasters. You can get uh, a ten percent discount. So if you want to check them out, please dearly do so. In the meantime, we'll be right back after the short break with Show versus Cipher for more amazing games. 